don't own a mansion, but if I did, I probably wouldn't leave mine abandoned. But I mean, I'm also not rich, so I guess I don't really have a say. I'm your host, Michaela, and today I'll be telling you the top 10 celebrities who abandon their million dollar mansions. And make sure to hit that subscribe button if you aren't already, and hit the bell so you can stay up to date on all our videos. But now, let's get started. Number 10, P. Diddy's Abandoned Mansion. In 2021, at Big Explorers, an Instagram account dedicated to curating Broken America posted a video titled Abandoned Mansion Owned by Rap Superstar. The video was then reposted by Complex and quickly went viral, sparking debate over where the mansion could be located. For years, urban explorers have been debating where to find P. Diddy's mansion. While at Big Explorers wrote, if you know where this is, don't explore it. Trail cameras everywhere and the cops were nice enough to not throw us in jail. Reddit users, however, floated around the idea that the mansion is located somewhere in Georgia. At Big Explorers told Insider, quote, it was purchased by Diddy in 2003 and he sold it to developers in 2007 and they plans to demolish the house and build 11 homes on the land, but the city didn't let them. It has seven bedrooms and 13 baths, I believe, including the pool house. It has a five car garage with an apartment on top of it and a tennis court. Now the home is privately owned, purchased in 2020 with hopes of renovating, I believe. Number nine, Mike Tyson's mansion in Southington. The house was built by Ted Vanelli, a politician from Trumbull County. Mike Tyson bought it for $300,000 in 1989. However, years later, the boxer had some personal and legal issues that affected his career and lifestyle. Although he tried to return to the top of his career, problems regarding his inappropriate behavior kept coming to light. His house was full of luxuries, from a basketball court to a large pool. He also owned three Bengal tigers. In 2003, however, Tyson was not in a good position financially, so the mansion was sold to businessman Paul Manya, but he never lived in the house. Ironically, the new owner also faced legal problems, and the estate became open to purchase again. In 2010, it was acquired by businessman Ron Hemmelgarn, who did some restorations to the mansion. However, he didn't move in there either. After many months in abandonment, the property passed into the hands of the religious organization Living Word Sanctuary. Then they worked in the house for four years, only on weekends to remodel it. Number eight, Pablo Escobar's Naples Estate. This Naples estate was built by Pablo Escobar and his cousin after purchasing various estates, which together made a total of 3,000 hectares. Immediately after closing the deal, the Escobars began beautifying the place by building rooms, roads, swimming pools, artificial lakes, and an airstrip, among other things. With time, a zoo, a bull ring, race cars, and other attractions were added to the ranch to entertain guests. After his passing in 1993, the property fell into abandonment and despair, and it was repeatedly occupied by security forces. After a long battle, it was confiscated by the Colombian government. It was in 2006 that a company proposed to buy the estate and transform it into a theme park. A project that would turn the place into the Hacienda Napoli theme park began the construction of water attractions, museums, and wildlife sanctuary. Number seven, Bruce Lee's mansion. When Bruce Lee passed away, he left a great legacy in the form of movies, books, and objects that could be used to understand his training methods and his philosophy on life. In addition to that, he left a mansion in Hong Kong, where he lived his last year with his family. After his departure in 1973, the house passed into the hands of businessman, Yu Pengian. He was known as the Love Hotel King because many of his properties ended up as hotels. So even though people begged that the Kung Fu Legends Mansion be transformed into a museum, it was turned into a hotel by the late 2000s. In 2009, businessman Yu announced that he would remodel the place and make it a tourist center. But the plan wasn't carried out because details were not fine-tuned, and he couldn't come to an agreement with the government. Years later, in 2015, Yu passed away. In 2018, his grandson announced that the place would be converted into a school to offer Mandarin and music lessons for children. But in 2019, what used to be Bruce Lee's house was demolished. A Chinese study center was built in its place. Number six, David Gilmore's mansion. The Hook End Manor sits on 25 acres of land in South Oxfordshire, UK. The house was once sold to Alvin Lee from the band 10 years after in 1972, where he built an extensive recording studio inside the 11 bedroom home. The studio space made it the perfect home for Pink Floyd guitarist David Gilmore, who purchased the home in 1980. The property has everything from the expected to the bazaar, including a recording studio used by Rod Stewart and Tom Jones to a supposed tombstone in the basement, according to Consequence of Sound. Gilmore sold the manor to Westside Productions and it was taken over by record producer Trevor Horn in the 90s. Horn put the home on the market after his wife was accidentally shot by their son with an air rifle at the home. She survived but spent more than three years in a coma and had brain damage, rendering her unable to move or speak. She then passed in 2014 of cancer. In 2009, producer Mark White reportedly bought the mansion for $15 million, but the home was never renovated or even lived in, as documented by numerous people photographing the empty bedrooms. Number five, Alistair Crowley's Bolskine House. The Scottish property has survived the passage of time and even flames. It belonged to Alistair Crowley and Led Zeppelin guitarist Jimmy Page. Long before the writer moved into the mansion, the area already had a history of strange incidents
evidences that went way back into the 13th century. The place used to shelter a church and a cemetery. The legend maintains that the church caught on fire and left no survivors. The Bolskine Mansion was built in its place in the 1760s by Colonel Archibald Fraser and was expanded by the Fraser family around 1830. The house has four bedrooms all on the same floor, a kitchen, and a bedroom for the servants. In addition, it had a library, a hall, and some believe that it had a tunnel that connected the mansion to the cemetery. Crowley bought the house in 1899, thinking it was perfect for performing special rituals. Some believe this is why mysterious occurrences used to happen there. Eventually, he left the property in 1913. Despite all the stories surrounding the estate, Jimmy Page bought it in 1970 as a collector of things related to Crowley. After restoring it, he left his friend Malcolm Dent, who also experienced strange events inside the mansion, in charge of the house. Some chairs would change places, doors open and close them by themselves, and rugs rolled up without explanation. The owners who followed him left behind some of their own horror stories. In 2015, the house caught fire and was severely damaged. Number four, Steve Jobs abandons his North Californian estate. The 17,000 square foot home known as Jackling House, abandoned by Steve Jobs in 2000. The mansion was constructed by the copper icon Daniel Cohen Jackling in 1925, which was purchased by Jobs in the 1980s. And it stayed as a private residence for over a decade before turning into a rental place and eventually falling into despair. In 2004, Steve had an idea of altering the Jackling house and to construct more modern family homes in place, but he indeed ended up with more opposition from the preservationist side. The battle over the home went into court until 2011. At last, the permission was granted to build his new home. Unfortunately, he passed away later that year due to pancreatic cancer. Number three, Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch. It wasn't just a home, it was also an amusement park exclusively for the singer's guests. The facilities were designed to entertain terminally ill children, and more than 2,700 acres of fun were opened for them in 1990. Michael Jackson named it Neverland, like the island from Peter Pan. It was his favorite place and he regularly spent time there, enjoying life with his family and friends. Located in California, the state was like a dream come true, filled with places for entertainment, like a movie theater, a zoo, and a theme park. Despite everything, in 1993, the singer began to face legal problems and a house warrant. In 2005, disputes continued and he decided to get rid of the property. When businessman William Bone purchased Neverland Ranch. It was priced between 16.5 to 30 million. In 2015, it was then sold for $100 million. In 2019, after the documentary Leaving Neverland, the value of the ranch went down to $31 million. Number two, the Minnelli Mansion. After the famous Vincent Minnelli passed away, word got out that his last wish was for the property located in Beverly Hills to pass into the hands of his daughter, Liza. However, only under one condition that Minnelli's last wife, Lee Anderson, the girl's stepmother, could stay in the house until her passing or until she decided to move. Then she would have to move her stepmother into a retirement home. In the beginning, there was no problem and Lee spent over 10 years in that house. However, in 2002, Minnelli tried to sell the mansion and that's when the problems arose. After Liza attempted to sell the property, she and Lee got stuck in legal conflicts over the house. Although Minnelli had offered to transfer her stepmother to a condo, Lee preferred to take action and proceeded legally. She accused her stepdaughter of cutting off her utilities and firing some of her service staff, which made her have to endure stressful, worrisome, and humiliating moments. For whatever reason, the accusation was dropped a month later. Lee continued to live on the property until she passed in 2009, although it was officially sold in 2004 and Liza paid the new owner's rent. After Lee passed away, the house was supposed to be remodeled, but that day never came. Number one, Rihanna's abandoned mansion. This home was sold by the star in 2016 due to issues with security. Though thought to be worth around $11.5 million, the home features seven bedrooms, nine bathrooms, and a rooftop sun deck. The property also benefits from a pool with water jets, walk-in closets, full home bar, movie theater, and fireplaces in almost every room. There is a large gated driveway, however, as I mentioned before, security at the home was somewhat lacking and thus led to the star leaving rather quickly. Now I'm sure you're dying to know what the details of what happened with the security is, so I'll give you the specifics. A man attempted to break into Rihanna's Pacific Pelody home, but was unsuccessful. The attempted burglary occurred about 7pm in October of 2013. A source said, quote, they saw the suspect via surveillance attempting to break into the house. The would-be burglar did not gain entry into the home and nothing was taken. Also, no arrests were reported. It was the latest in a string of incidents that drew the LAPD to famed singer's home. In June 2013, authorities had arrested a man who was spotted on her roof. In April, a caller reported gunshots inside the house. And in February, a man pleaded guilty to breaking into Rihanna's home and sleeping in a bed he thought was hers. So honestly, I don't really blame her for leaving. But that is all, and thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.